If you find this video useful, remember to click like and subscribe. And for more information about all our resources and revision courses that we do, go to alevelmathsrevision.com. So in this tutorial, aimed at bridging the gap between GCSE and A-Level Maths, we're going to have a look at factorising and solving quadratics. So take this example here, x squared plus 6x plus 8. If we were to try and factorise that, what we need is two numbers that times together to make 8, but add together to make 6. So let's list them in pairs. So we've got 1 and 8, 2 and 4. And there we found it. Now, when doing this, you needn't write this down. In A-level, the emphasis is on doing things like this, which are routine GCSE operations. The emphasis is on doing them quickly. So if you just spot that the numbers are 4 and 2, it's absolutely fine to say x plus 4, x plus 2. But the key point is here that we want two numbers to times to make the final number and add to make the coefficient, the number attached to, x. Say though, however, the question changed to be solve x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So what we do in this case, we factorise again to get x plus 4, x plus 2 equals 0. And this is the key point that, I, um, that we're about to emphasise now. And I see a lot of students come from GCSE not really knowing why the solutions are what they are. So this is saying we've got two numbers x plus 4 and x plus 2 times together to make 0. Well, if we times two things together to make 0, one of them has to be 0. So either x plus 4 is 0 or x plus 2 is 0. So we've got two separate linear equations we can solve now. So we take 4 to the other side there, we get x equals minus 4 or x equals minus 2. And quadratic equations like this have two solutions. It's also quite common at the start of A-level to be asked to sketch a graph given its equation. So if we were asked to sketch y equals x squared plus 6x plus 8, same equation as before, then first of all what we need are the x-intercepts, or roots, as they're called. So the roots occur when y equals 0. That's what a root of an equation like this is, where y equals 0, or the x-intercept. So when y equals 0, we've got x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So we can solve that equation using the method we did before. So just looking up the method we used before, just for completeness, I'll write it out in full. Equals 0. Factorise it. Set it equal to 0. That means either x plus 4 equals 0 or x plus 2 equals 0. Which in turn means that x equals minus 4 or x equals minus 2. So we've got the axes there. So we're going to get x equals minus 4 or x equals minus 2. So it's going to look something like this u-shaped graph it's quadratic with x-intercepts there that's a bit of a rubbish quadratic i'll get rid of that try again and in an exam you'll probably have to do that yourself get rid of it try it again as you can see i've put my intercepts too close together i'm trying to hit the target that i've already put there but if i do it a bit differently how about i just do the best u-shape i can and not really worry about the scale and I can see that looks a lot better. And what I don't want are these bits here coming back down like that again. Or I don't want it going straight up like that. Coming back on itself. Don't want any of that. That graph as it is is quite good. And now we're looking for the y-intercept. So the y-intercept happens when x equals 0. Therefore, we've got y equals 0 squared plus 6 lots of 0 plus 8, which is equal to 8. But we knew that because it's just the number on its own. So then mark this on the graph as well. So there, that's what makes a good sketch of a quadratic. 
And I'm aware we're moving at quite a pace here, but you should be familiar with this from your GCSE. So that's a recap of the grades 6 and 7 stuff from GCSE. Now let's move on to the more difficult quadratic equations and how to factorise those. And this is what this tutorial is all about. It's all about trying to get this particular type of quadratic, quadratic that I'm about to show you um, and be able to factorise it without any hassle. So let's take this particular example here. 6x squared minus 19x plus 10. And we're asked to factorise that. So the way you've probably been taught... And it's a perfectly reasonable method, not the quickest. I will show you in a little while what I think the quickest is, but let's have a recap of a method I think you've probably been shown. So the method I think you've been shown is to do 6 times 10 to get 60. And we need uh, two numbers that times to make 60. And we want them to add to the number in the middle. So add to make minus 19. Well, let's think of all the possible numbers that could times to make 60 and add to make minus 19. So we've got um, one and 60, clearly, isn't it? Let's try two and 30. No. Three and 20. No. Four, 15. Well, actually, that fits the bill. We could make minus 19 with those by making both of those negative. Now they're both times together to make 60. So now let's rewrite this quadratic out again, except instead of writing minus 19x for the middle term, we're going to split it into these two factors here. So minus 4x minus 15x plus 10. So convince yourself that this here is the same as that. They have written nothing different. So now what I'm going to do is factorise the first pair of terms and the last pair of terms, making sure that this sign in the middle remains untouched. And that's really important. This sign in the middle must always remain the same. So factorising fully each pair, I get 2x at the start there and it becomes 3x take 2. Then there's a take sign. Again, it's so important that this sign here remains intact. So take 5 and 3x plus 2. And I've made a really common mistake there. So what I should do now is check to see that both brackets are the same. So I've got 3x minus 2 there and 3x plus 2 there. That's not right. If we're doing it correctly, then both brackets should be the same. What I've forgotten is that there's a minus 5 as a factor there, and I need to times it by something to make positive 10. So the only way I can do that is with a double minus. So, got that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise it again. So they've both got a factor in common. They've both got 3x minus 2 in common. Both these terms are times by 3x minus 2. So we can take that out as a factor. 3x minus 2 appears in both terms. Therefore, take it out as a factor like that. And the first one times by 2x, then there's a minus sign appears. And the second one of those times by 5. And now we've got it fully factorised. And that's the method I think you've been shown. We'll do a couple more, but I'm going to show you a different method now, the way I like it done. And we're going for speed rather than simplicity here. So I think this method's nice and easy but it's quite time consuming. Let's have a look at just how you do it by inspection. That is just looking at the equation. So we've got 6x squared minus 19x plus 10. So that's 6x squared. What I'm going to do is fill the brackets out. 6x. And the other one has to be x. Or an alternate way it could be made is 3x times 2x so that makes 6x squared which is brilliant that makes 6x squared which is good but only one of them can be correct and when I'm doing this I don't actually write it down I just write down the answer and again that's encouraged quite a bit at A level uh, for simple GCSE calculations like this so now I'm looking for two numbers that times together to make 10 to put here and here and we want them in the end to add together 
to make minus 19. Let's just concentrate on the times in, to make 10 first. So we can have 1 and 10. So the 6x is going to times by 10 to give 60x. And that's going to times by 1 to give 1x. 60x and 1x, we've got no hope of ever making minus 19x. Okay, so how about um, we put uh, 10 there and 1 there? That gives 10x and 6x. No, we're not going to make minus 19 like that. Let's try 2 and 5. So 30x and 2x. No, we're not going to make minus 19 with that. Um, and how about then 5 and 2? So we've got 12, 5. No, we're not going to make minus 19 with that. So it looks like we've ran out of factors. There's no way we can make the minus 19x with that. So let's move on to the next one. So let's say we've got, I don't know, 5 there and 2 there. 4x and 15x. Actually, we're onto something. 4x and 15x are ideally placed. So... Let's put those numbers in there now. Again, 4x and 15x. So now we've just got to decide on the signs. Well, we want them to add together to make minus 19. So if I put minus on both of them, the times together to make positive 10, that's good. And they add together to make minus 4x, minus 15x, which is minus 19x as required. So it's sort of doing the same thing as this one here, but just with less working. And it really needs practice to do this by inspection method. But I'm convinced that this is the quicker and superior way if you really put your mind to it. So let's do a couple of more examples like that. So let's say we were asked to solve 4x squared plus 8x plus 3 equals 0. Now we should always try factorization first because that's usually the easiest method. So if I'm going to factorize it using what I'm going to call the quick method... And I will stress the long method is fine. But I think we should all aspire to be quicker and better and more proficient at things, more fluent, let's call it. So let's try it this way. So there's not that many numbers that times together to make three. The numbers that go in the bracket are either one and three. Let's see if we can make 8x with those. And when you start off practicing these, it might be worth just writing them in the bracket in pencil so you can pretend that you're multiplying the bracket out. So we've got 12x and 1x. We're never going to be able to make 8x with that. So let's try a different way. Let's try 3 and 1. So I've got 3x and 4x. Never going to be able to make 8x with that. So that's these brackets pretty much done. It can't be that one. So let's try a different way. Could We could get the 4x squared. Let's try 2x and 2x so let's try 3 and 1 so 6x and 2x well yes we can make positive 8x with 6x and 2x in fact we can make it if the 6x is positive and the 2x is positive so that now means that two things are multiplied together to equal 0 Either the first thing equals 0, or the second thing equals 0, which leads us to two new and easier equations to solve. 2x equals minus 3, which means that x equals minus 3 over 2. Or 2x equals minus 1, x equals minus 1 half. So there we're done, we solved it. So let's try another. So this one's asking us to sketch y equals 5x squared minus 8x minus 4. So the first thing we're going to look for are the x-intercepts or the roots as they're sometimes called or quite often called rather. So y equals 0 is where the roots or x-intercepts occur. Which means that we're solving 5x squared minus 8x minus 4 equal to y which in this case is 0. So we're quite lucky that this number here is prime. Because now we know that the brackets have to be 5x and x. There's no other way of making 5x squared. And we want to make, we want the numbers of times together to make minus 4. And we want to add them together to make minus 8. So let's try, and again you do this in pencil, 
say when you're first starting off but eventually you'll just be able to do it right first time so let's try one and four five times four is twenty which looks far too big so i'm getting a bad feeling about having chosen this already and one x there so 20x and 1x never going to be able to make minus 8 so let's try 4 and 1 so we've got 5x and 4x nah never going to be able to make minus 8x so 1 and 4 can't have been right let's try 2 and 2 10x and 2x well indeed we can make minus 8 with that so rub out our pencil let's go for pen now so we want to make minus 8x. Well, we can get that with minus 10x plus 2x. So there's our factorised brackets. So two things times together to make 0. That means either the first thing equals 0 or the second thing equals 0. That leaves us with 5x equals minus 2. So x equals minus 2 fifths. Or, simply x equals 2. And there are two answers. So there's the x-intercepts. Now let's go for the y-intercepts. So y-intercepts. And we can see it's just an ordinary quadratic, so the y-intercept's minus 4. Technically speaking, we get that by subbing x equals 0 in there, which will give us minus 4 is minus 4. And now we're ready to sketch the graph. And again, sketch is the key word. No table of numbers just sketch it so we'll learn from our mistakes the last time what i'm not going to do is mark the x intercepts or roots on i just know from this that I i'm going to get one that's a bit negative and one that's quite positive so a little bit in the negative direction quite positive so get the right mode there we go bit of a rubbish one there so what i'm going to do and this is what you would do in an exam do it always in pencil, and if you mess up like I just have, just rub it out. Then start from there and make it better the next time. Because rarely will you get this right first time. There we go. Let's try and get a rid of that little kick there. Oh. And again, very, very common to have to do it a few times in an exam. There we go. That'll do. So we've got minus two-fifths. 2 and the y intercept is minus 4. Now, a common mistake to make is for people to make it symmetrical about the y axis. I've made sure that my minimum point is a little bit to the right of the y axis because this curve's symmetrical. So, if we're 2 across here and only 2 fifths across here, then the center point, the line of symmetry, has to be in the middle there. So make sure you get that in the right place. And that really is just a, a crash course in factorising harder quadratics. I think, again, aspire to do it the quick way um, <clears throat> rather, than the, rather than what I'm going to call the easy but long way. Because in an A-level exam, you're time pressured. Just, just give it a go. Just give all the examples I'm going to give you in the worksheet. Have a go at all of them this quick way and really try and force yourself to do it um, with less working. And it's not often you'll hear us maths teachers try to get you to do something with less working. So hope you found that useful. Um, please click like and subscribe if you did. For more videos like this, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And to find out more about our Skype tuition and revision courses, go to alevelmathsrevision.com.